All right, welcome back to our Jack in the Box tier list. <laughs> we'll be starting off with what are we starting off with, Yoshi? Um, let's talk about the tiny tacos. They're pretty good, but actually, we're not talking about the tiny tacos. We are loading in the game. We're loading into Demons Raw versus Orbits. This is here. We, we are. We are loading into. We're, the game. we're here. We made it. We made, we it, made it. Hey, did did you guys like that short break? It was it was short, and we broke. <laughs> and and now we're in game. And dual wielding arrows for the side of orbits. Yeah, I think they're both gonna lock them in, lock her in there. That's probably the plan. Yeah, I, I think so. We have an atlas band. We might be seeing like a hot shot start and drive. Any of those good atlas trainings. Arrow band coming out to be expected. Hook resets. Not. <laughs> No stranger. No to this mercy. Era. No stranger to this era. That's that's true. Well, Lumos, third after pick of the day. Three for three. Makes a lot of sense. This character it might be good. It might be a little bit good. It might might be pretty good. We see the Drakkar probably coming out, and I think the Drakkar once again works really well with the Ami. Something you like, to, you want to see, and we see Fini. Whoa! 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 Might be a creation star. Could be timeless. Could be... It's missile could be props. Missile spark prop. of resilience. Spark of resilience. Also, it could also be that. It could also be that. It, it uh, kind of getting getting bold and brash. Yeah, I'm just going to be. How much will be watching Kai Noob this whole game? I want to see the Finny in action. I was trying to make it work. I was playing it in some scrims, and I was. I, I like it. I think it has chances, but it can get really tough when um, oh, you're not able to get the KOs. But they immediately, they are able to get the KOs at the cost of both barriers, though. But let's watch how fast they can get it back if they can run up and deal some damage. Spencer able to dodge the barrier beam using that cyber swipe. It still ends up staggered, but is able to finish it off. So... Like, what a weird round that was. Because they there's some, like, KOs happening. But this is... This is, honestly, it's a scary start, in my opinion, if you're, orbit, if you're uh, Orbits. Because winning... Uh, winning this point is good. And it, goes, it shows that your game plan can work of just score before you get KO'd. Or even get these KOs before you get KO'd. A snake is looking really low. <laughs> Um, but if they're able to keep core control and score faster, then that's good. But if they're getting KO'd this early, then the damage is only going to scale more and more. So look at how much they are being, like, they are all low. Every member of the team is low. Uh, but Spencer right, well. <laughs> able to get one back instead, despite their whole team being really low. And this is a, this is a, fin is a problem I see with Finny, is that you don't, you aren't able to finish as Finny as very easily. Instead, you are able to do massive damage to a lot of people. But it does not matter if the KOs don't come out. So now Hook resets, doing a little bit of a rotate. Spencer moving up uh, to get this orb, but oh, instead, no. Snake or maybe Kaya knew. I was not. I couldn't even. I was not. I did not see. But it's able to get this KO, and Snake is able to quickly convert into a score. Yeah, Spencer stepping out of the goal box, <laughs> shot dead with no hesitation. Unfortunately, without a goalie, it'll be very hard to defend. This snake just ashered it up. And you don't see Missile Prop oh, Finny. And he's doing it again. Oh, Zimbabwe's looking real low. Missile Prop uh, Finny is... It's really... You don't see it too often because you use... Uh, not, it's not... It's a good take on Finny, but I feel like very often there's just something better that Finny will have as an option. Um, and sometimes Missile Prop will be better for an ally, but Snake... Just absolutely running through the entire team. Gets a KO. And almost gets two. And then ends up getting a goal for it as well. Just as, That was insane. Just runs through their entire team. This is just an Asher moment. Just like, what? There's only so much you can do. Um, you kind of have to rely on keeping the core away from Snake. But there's so much else you have to worry about. Like, not dying, it's like has no energy and no stagger. Uh, all the cooldowns coming out onto him. Snake, however, also low. And 
tie-in, but does not matter. Kainu just dribbles up and flips it in. Look, resets cannot help assist on defense when staggered like this, when pushed out. And a one Drekkar 1v1 versus Aimee in the gold box is... Honestly, it can get pretty Drakkar favorite at times. I, I I think it's pretty good for the Drakkar to be in that position. Strike shotgun. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have anything to just 100% deny it other than just playing the strike war situation a bit correctly. But tempo swing on Snake is this is really big for the damage. Yeah, one of Asher's best trainings, arguably the best one, and it also pairs really well with uh, Spark Resilience. You know, if you're doing damage based on your stagger and you have a stagger training, well, hey. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of extra, extra just for you. And on, not only that, their team, Gumi and Kainib, were able to get all the defensive trainings, like Catalyst and Stagger Swagger. So now there's, like, no real way of them to come back. And Spencer gained stacks on stacks, but it's probably going to end up being KO'd at least once. As honest, I, I didn't mention it, but... Hook resets KO'd at the beginning of that round as well. Barriers are equalized though, so there is a, still a, a chance here for either team. Lumos and Spencer are trying to move up here. They have the bottom side of the map and Lumos has flipped. It's gonna it's a little tough of Gumi to be able to defend the whole goal zone against not only this flip, but just random strikes as well. Even though the reverse power play is able to get a shot off and flips not even doesn't even have to be used, but Having this flip at the start of our round could prove disastrous if damage is able to be stacked correctly. Yeah, while well, Lumos pulled his, his Jedi mind trick on Gumi and bent the core straight into the goal. And is sitting on that flip, like you said. Uh, a well-placed flip here could get both barriers. Uh, and he, he might have to do it himself because Hook Resets is dead in the water. They do have two okay. flips up, though, to try to defend it. Spencer, though, has to just run away from Snake. And now the goal zone is just completely open. Lumos is able to get that flip off, but it ends up getting the clear is blocked by the black hole. And now it's a bit of a 1v1. Kind of going to try and move up here and find a way to use his flip, but is not necessary. As Snake is able to find just an interesting, like, weird pass through to get that in. Yeah, truly a, a vicious game. Interesting to point out, nobody took vicious fan brace, which uh, considering all the damage coming out and all the damage that could be expected, oh my god, the ashers are the ashers are ashering, and it's it's scary. But yeah, unfortunately, Snake did not win that asher battle. Oh yeah, interesting to see no fan brace. It makes sense though when looking at the game plans like of. We just gotta control the core more, um, especially. That, I mean, I we didn't talk about it much, but hook resets has rapid fire, which is one of uh, the best trainings you can get on for car, because especially when you already start with prime time, basically. So just already have the combo. But Snake, once again, is able to walk through their whole team and score the goal. Asher might be a good character. Asher. Looking like a pretty good character. The, the wax melting out of their mouths, but that's okay, because an airship <laughs> comes out from Lumos. And he gets a barrier. Yeah, Looking no. good. Looking a little bit more on the back foot this time. Snake is getting a little bit low, but wow. never mind. Hook resets kind of is forced to be positioned in a corner, which is perfect for their setup where they're able to get the secondary from Finny combo with Asher, but. Instead, um, a second KO is immediately found, and Spencer now looks to be the next one on the chopping block, which will reset these max stacks if they're able to find Spencer. But there's really nowhere for Spencer to run because they cannot sacrifice a point for these stacks if they really felt the need to. Uh, and there they go. And now Hook resets. is going to have to play goalie. Uh, instead, ooh, just awkward situation. It was pretty much over because of the Finny ult anyway, but Snake is knocked right into perfect position to get that goal. And now looking pretty convincingly 2-0, and they're just going to scale harder on this next draft. Or, ooh. Yeah, first of all, Snake or Luma is probably per picking up prime time. Another one of Ash's grades. Nope, we're sparking. Uh, the prime time nerfs it may be stronger than I thought. Yeah, that... Big fish. Spark comes out. Which is also, like, and you might think, like, a big fish tempo swing, that's really good. 
It's also really good is you have Spark Resilience and Spark of Agility and Tempo Swing, so you're getting even more stats. You don't get that size, which is I think is also really huge. So I think Lumos, it's a huge pickup for Lumos because you have that bulk up, which kind of helps with your power, but more importantly, you have that survivability. And now it's going to take so much more to KO you, especially as a character like Asher who has built-in uh, tankiness through that secondary. So if they can... If Lumos can use this to just stay alive and take, but still take a lot of aggro, things will be looking pretty well. But despite the lack of KOs that round, it just doesn't matter. It's just a pretty big level advantage. There's, and honestly, a small, honestly, pretty small but significant uh, awakenings advantage. Two demons raw, and maybe a bit of a player advantage, as they're able to just kind of breathe through that round. But Lumos now trying to use this big fish. To get something going, trying to get through this team, trying to do what Snake has been doing, and just kind of walk through their whole team. Isn't quite able to find it the same way, but is almost able to find an outplay on the Gumi. But ooh, past Splitter, not able to find something there, uh, able to slip through. But now Hook resets is in bad position, but the turret is putting Snake really low, and a great angle from Lumos, able to find this last barrier. Snake, though, able to find that dash to get their last barrier as well. And Snake, ha although is staggered, has a lot of energy to spare. And they don't have great ways of KOing from the center is what I would say if they didn't have Lumos, who's just able to get that KO. Gumi has no cooldowns. Just a little shrug as Hook Resets finishes that one off. Yeah, wow. The Orbit Surge. Really cleaned up some KOs and was able to make it happen, got in there. Yeah, maybe this is, could be the start. This could be the start of something great. Um, Spencer having perfect form. Beautiful. This could be the start of something great. Something beautiful. Never too late to start something incredible. But here we go. This is what this raw, this composition is good against. It's, it's oh when they are God. all bunched up. They can just stack all their damage on top of them at the same time. But Gumi even deciding, saying, I'm tossing this core to the side. Let's go get them. <laughs> they are only able to get one KO, however, and are not able to score afterwards. But Kai Noob lands a random snipe to get a KO. And now, yeah, Snake just able to get the outplay there. Reads that Spencer's going to go for the Cyber Swipe. That doesn't go in aggressively, but stays back and finds that angle to send that in. Yeah, uh, Demon's on the hunt. Uh, picking up kills, picking up these goals, and once again things are looking things are looking difficult for Orbit. <laughs> things are looking difficult for Snake, who is on knocking on death's door, really struggling here. If you look at the Asher's health bars; both of them are are really staggering up. Uh, and wow, I was about to say neither of them have died in a while, and I'm just wrong, because there goes Lumos. Yeah, despite having. What, three stagger trainings, enhancing trainings, and being Asher, there's just too much damage to deal with. And too much pressure to deal with as the glitch pop, cross match glitch pop, is able to just completely secure that. And the whole match is secured just by a strike by Gaia Noob. Able to finish that one off in pretty, I'll say, it, very convincing fashion. Right, I think it goes back to what you said at the very beginning of the match, where, uh, the winner of the first set gets to gets to scale a lot harder with these damage trainings, and that's exactly what they did. Snake picked up the tempo swing, and then Gumi and Kainu picked up uh, defensive trainings, whether it was to deny uh, orbits or to just have them for themselves. They really had a very strong draft and put orbits in at such a deficit that even though they were getting close to coming back, in a in both sets scoring some points it still just always seemed out of reach because of that deficit exactly like it really feels like those first two rounds should have been the weakest rounds for bounty hunters and then even after or not bounty hunters for, <laughs> for demons raw um but they kind of just won anyway they just played their comp they still got KOs, and if it honest, even if they were to lose like the second set, they would have just gotten even stronger. And it's really hard to match that scaling with comps that uh, don't scale as hard. Like if you don't have um, characters 
I don't like it's really hard to compare anything because versus damage comps, uh, it's, they banned Atlas because they knew that's the only way you lose. It feels like sometimes yeah. is if if they have an Atlas that can scale against you, then that can become a win condition. But when you're playing full damage and um, they don't have an Atlas, the game just gets a lot easier real quickly. Yeah, I agree. Atlas is the premier anti damage comp because damage characters often have a lot of uh, stuffing potential as well. You look at uh, Asher. Hello, Asher. Uh, she puts cores in nets. is what she's built for. But Atlas you know, presses his secondary ability and suddenly you, you use as many of your own abilities into it. You're not getting through. So uh, A Atlas really, really strong into damage comps because of how they shake up. Oh, and here we load into the gates. The gates. I expect to see another era band come out here. Air is very strong on this map, and interested to see what uh, orbits bans. Yeah, after that last game. Oh, and no more Asher. Um, We're done with Asher. Like, I'm tired of playing Asher. I just played three games of it, and we lost all of them. Maybe Asher is the problem. Snake is no slouch on the Asher either. Let's not play against that. And instead, Whoa. we see the Kazan being hovered. My Umbrella Man stepping into the ring, it seems like. A very interesting pick. We haven't seen a whole lot of Kazan uh, in NASL. Um, I've seen a lot of players picking it in, or a lot of top players picking it in weeklies, and um, to great success. The Kazan pick, a uh, pretty strong character, one might say. I can get a lot done. Yeah, pretty but strong I'm very, indeed. I'm very excited to see what Lumos can do with this character. Uh, we see, yeah, just the comps are out in force. Um, once again, seeing a, a lot of damage. I mean, Zentaro, this is going to be a lot of damage, especially when they can bunch up. Once again, this is a map where. Uh, teams can just end just end up like really bunched up in these corners and if you can get snake to just hit all of them and you can get kind of hit all of them then they can the game can look get real bad real quick but with this start we have tempo swing and extra special so extra special on these imies they're gonna be able to match these turrets which is gonna be pretty important because turrets these turrets are one of the best way to get bears on this map it's uh adds so much shoving potential but Zentar oh, and there's the KO from the damage they have. Doesn't even have anything to counter it, but they get one in return, which is really huge. They need to get this trade in order to make something happen. Um, however, Lumos is probably gonna have a little bit more trouble defending than Snake, but doesn't really matter as both members, KO members, are come back online and are able to try to make something happen here. It's gonna be a little. It's just honestly, this Kazan pick is gonna have a little bit more trouble trying to shove through. Um, on the same line, uh, Centauro isn't necessarily the best at shoving through, but has many parallels to characters like Asher with the primary, and just has his own ways of making things happen. Lumos goes for the pole flip, but not able to find something there. Um, a little bit of portaling going on, but Yumi is able to block it with this. Uh, with this portal. Something interesting to see about the, or the, the pillar. And the pole comes out. The great angle able to come through from Lumo, uh, straight to Lumos, who is ready for it with the pole to get that goal. But um, what I want to point out is Rune is seen as very strong on this map. But uh, if you know how to play against it, the pillar can't always really cover the portals. Sometimes if you put it in the, in the right spot and you're able to put it in the portal in the right spot, you can kind of go around the pillar. And then uh, if the rune's not ready for that, it can end up in some pretty good positions. Loses the strike war, Spencer, is, but Spencer's ready to lose that strike war as the flip comes out instead. But does not matter, Kai Noob dimes up Snake, who has a free shot in the bottom left. Also of note, Spencer did not take a jack button. <laughs> yeah, Spencer rocking rock the momentum boots. Um, <laughs> Demons were all, all rocking the kicks. A very interesting pick. Yeah, max maximum shoes. 
One of them must have dropped their wallet. <laughs> they <laughs> wanted to show him off. Um, but yeah, full boots. Boots are out. So they're going to be real quick. They're trying to play up this field. Um, Yumi also moving up there, using that momentum boots. Honestly, I think there might have been an opening, but instead, kind of a snake able to grab possession. And I don't, I don't know what to say. There's something, the vibes of this game. There's just something about the vibes. Yeah, the vibes are stank this game. The vibes are stank. I'm trying to figure it out. I just feel, it just feels like, I don't know, Orbis don't feel as alive right now. They just don't, after that last game, where they were just KO'd the whole game. They probably weren't having very much fun. I, I, they need to find some way to like break through mentally and into this game, if not just through the gameplay as well. But um, let's see what they can do. No presets. I'm gonna have to try to find a way to get this up. The Expanse does a really good job of denying this IME ult and the rest of the shoving potential from that team. But this just gets kind of scary. Lumos is taking a lot of damage. Has flipped to possibly deny. Hook resets tries to block with the IME turret, but it looks like the animation actually ends up blocking them uh, away from being able to strike that core flip, which puts them in a bad situation. And that's the first set over. Yeah. Here we go into draft. We can see some good trainings coming out for the, the brawlers. Twin drive deny makes sense. And, uh, Atlas picks Hotshot. I think part of the reason the vibes are are feeling a little off is Orbitz is playing a slower game where the Kazan not really having, or Kazan a very awakening heavy character, does a lot of damage on his own. <laughs> Do not get it twisted, but generally struggles without a lot of awakenings to, to stay powerful and relevant. And Atlas, yeah. Gumi is gone. character up by Gumi. <laughs> eh. Oh, both goalies actually able to be KO'd by the opposing forwards. Uh, Lumos yeah, was doing wow. it solo though, which is pretty crazy. He just landed every single ability onto him, and then it just Gumi is gone. But now both goalies are back online, and it's actually Orbits who are on the front foot here. Seeing, we're finally seeing some signs of life. We're seeing the damage scaling. This build difference should help a lot. But despite the nerfs, um, still just the rune combo is one hell of a drug, but it's just too hard to recover from that initial deficit of two barriers as Hook Recess is able to finish that one off. And once again, we're, we're seeing some lights. We're seeing, we're seeing the lights. We're seeing the light come on. Yeah. Orbits. You know, the power bill has been paid. We're, we're so back. We are so back. Now we're seeing Snake being the target of this one. Has oh, we're in the this corner. core flip. Two core flips online now. They can, oh, not able to get a single barrier though, but are able to get some KOs. Uh, when you get these flips onto enemies, you, it is like you are dealing a good amount of damage. If you can get two flips onto an enemy, that's like plus your cooldowns. Things are not going to be looking good for them. Spencer does not have ult and really has no way of defending against this IME turret without getting KO'd themselves. So instead, the goal is let through. And it's now tied once again 1 1. Lumos though, sees this portal is immediately going to run through and try and. Mess up, Gumi. Oh, Lumos looking for a hook. Gets banished halfway through. Hook does not come out. And, and Lumos hurting a little bit. Atlas Ult comes out to help him out. But the Dirts are also in on that too. I mean, Lumos is full HP now, so it didn't really matter. But um, that little bit less healing, it makes it little, like, it makes it possible. Before, it was just impossible because you just get full HP off of Atlas ult, but now it is definitely possible to KO someone after one. But now Kai Noob has flip and is low, which is really scary because Lumos has his cooldowns. So it's going to try and get a combo here. He's setting up the pull on Kai Noob to get a KO, but it's not able to follow up with anything. Now has flip to get this last barrier or a KO even. Kai Noob kind of has to take a break from playing defense, but Yubi might not need that help um, with all these pillars coming through. And just able to clear it out. Still both goalies holding their one barrier, but the bounce just hits it a little bit too demonically for Yumi to catch. But once again, another one. Just another crazy angle is hit that the goalie is just not able to reach in time. But things are going to get a little bit scary now. With all the portals online. And 
overtime in session. But Snake is able to find the gap that Hook resets is not able to cover and score one onto or bits. Yep, sneaks it in. And something I uh, we just completely neglected to mention that I just realized is that it's a tempo swing extra special start. So we're seeing two extra special Amy's, an extra special Atlas, a couple tempo swing brawlers, and then extra special rune, which means that Gumi, if you've been paying attention, has just kind of been banishing Lumos off cooldown. Yeah. Yeah, the beginning of, yeah, the beginning of the match was kind of looking at how uh, the IMEs would match up against each other, but extra special on Rune is kind of ridiculous. But, yeah, yeah once they well, <laughs> also ridiculous is just the amount of damage coming out of Demon's Raw as they're just able to just uh, demolish them once again. Um, this Atlas ult's often being used on teammates, so Spencer hasn't really been able to use it to defend more and just kind of chill out. And if nothing like pauldrons or honestly even a jack button to help on that defense it's a bit more easy it's a bit more easier to ko this guy but here comes prime time which uh, honestly <laughs> which has just been nerfed like over and over and over again but it's still on kazan is a pretty insane training and perfect form coming out uh for um gumi as well it's kind of a ridiculous training it feels if you don't doesn't feel like that when you think perfect form, you think like, oh, you want that on Brawlers, right? But really, it's just kind of really, really good on any character in the game that hits the core, which is most of them. Or hits uh, most anyone. Most of them do. Most of them do that. But Gumi starts off pretty low. Uh, I think Lumos is probably might have been able to evade the banish or just generally is being able to upplay. But Gumi, this is the one other tool Gumi has to deny the Oki is this dash. And because of this, it's, they have to 2v2 in their own gold box because Lumos is not there to help. And if it open to see if Snake can find something, but Hook Resets is able to clear at the cost of HP. But at the same time, Gumi's looking extremely low right now. Kainoob's gonna have to back up the help on defense. But uh, instead, that's not what we're gonna see. We're gonna see a double down on the offense. Instead, Gumi's still looking low. It's kind of a race here to see. Can Gumi be KO'd and an opportunity presented to Lumos before Kainoob and Snake can find something? The answer so far has been no. It's been kind of a stalemate on both ends, but Lumos <laughs> cannot, the core just cannot reach him, but it finally oh. does, and the Strike War is won, and Lumos finds a goal. Yeah, it, it seems that Orbits have developed a game plan, uh, one that's been seen time and time again. Lumos will be going forward and just, you know, beating Gumi to death and letting Spencer and Hook Resets kind of double goalie. And midfield doesn't exist. Just if the core can get to the other side of the map, Lumos will cook it up. And otherwise, they hold it down. And uh, it seems to be working so far. Gumi looking low. They've, they've traded barriers. Yeah, that banish comes up so fast. Extra special and perfect form. Just it just it just it is so it is just not it is not fun. It is not fun it, to have it, to deal it, with room banish over and over again. Like you can Lumos has shown that he's just gonna he's gonna generally be able to evade it but sometimes you know there's a sometimes rune doesn't give out the vocal um indicator that he's ulting which makes it much 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 harder to react to so not being able to hear that can make it hard for limos in some of these situations especially when this many ults are coming out which gives him more opportunities to get these uh weird moments but despite the banish happening kind of is probably trying to clear it through the portal but barely misses it which gives lumos just that one opportunity to shoot that in before getting banished once again uh, but now look at them 2-0 2-0 on the set right now this game plan it's working lumos able to evade without using an evade by just using the evade that has built into this character's kit for whatever reason all right and he needs this, it yeah he definitely needed it uh whoa but the barriers Despite all of that, the barriers are lost instantly, which causes, um... It's just kind of, this is the downside of the game plan, is if they are not able to defend fast enough, then it's, it's kind of over. But this time, they're ready! They know this guy's done it every single time! He's gonna walk through the portal! So Kai Noob instantly jumps on top of him, and just throws up everything, and then... And it's just over! It just instantly dies, the flip comes out too, to just secure that K on to Lumos. 
And now Lumos has to like really worry about this for the rest of the game too. It's not only just this one KO that re only re really resulted in one gold barrier. That's gonna be for the rest of the game. They're gonna have to be ready. Lumos is gonna be playing around Kaya Noob as well. As they do a little bit of goalie swapping, Gumi's moving up. Is tired of getting Oki this game. Um, now it's Kaya Noob's turn to play goalie. Has the slick kicks. Uh, which can, can work. Um, Snake moving up, trying to find something. Spencer does have cooldowns and flip, so it's going to be hard to find something that good. As Snake is also getting really low. They must uh, going a bit away from the strategy of staying, of fighting Gumi, and instead deciding there's an easier target than Snake, and they're finally able to get that KO. For the, even, honestly, a good timing too, because the second portal is now up. So a lot more ways to attack this barrier, but a lot more ways to defend. Lumos has flipped now. They got the last barrier, but this is a weird spot for it to be in. Kind of now has possession and a flip, but something's able to block it the last second, but they're able to get the KO, and the Lustial Intervention does not come out in time. Now Spencer is going to have to try to clear this one out, but Snake gets the stun, gets the bottom corner, and it's 2-2, and we're back to match point. And we're back to match point. Things looking tense as Demon's Raw seems to have adapted to their strategy. Yeah, Lumos try. Okay, then here's the next step. Here's the next step of the of the adaptations. Lumos the moves Oki up, chart. moves up, and knows that Kainim's gonna come after him. So Kainim just straight throws the ult to just kind of stun lock Lumos and again hit a bunch, but he immediately evades it with his secondary, and is able to get through it. But really, no damage has been found so far. Just one gold barrier piece, make it two. But this next one's likely to be found unless a, a pillar can come out in time, which it doesn't. Spencer now kind of has to in a scary spot where he might have to 1v1 snake, but no one's in the gold box. No one's able to get this core though, Lumos included, so no gold's able to be found. Snake has flipped now. Can he find an angle? He, does, he tried this same thing last time and it wasn't able to work, but Kainu put the glitch pop to save it and to save the set. Now Kainu has a shot on goal. Snake is covering the top angle. Spencer is a bit worried, probably of a dash to cover the cross pass, but and ends up playing right in the snake's hands. And that finishes off this match with a 2-0 to Demon's Raw. Yeah, what a crazy save by Gumi and Kainub at the end. Getting it, getting it through back to Snake, who just puts it in. Yeah, Demon's Raw, was... once again, just showing how dominant a set of players they are. Wow. They just let nothing in for free. That's the, the thing about it. They don't, like, even if they are playing a little bit looser, like, sometimes they, like, straight up Gumi, I don't even think they needed <laughs> to. I don't think it, I don't, I don't think it was that different. I don't think it really contributed to their game plan that much better. Gumi just, at one point, was just like, all right, kind of play goalie. Like, they were both, I don't, maybe it was a cooldowns thing. Maybe they just thought it'd be a good mix up. Maybe they generally thought it'd be good, but it just felt like, it felt like it was kind of a four fun thing and it didn't matter because kind of would just hold it down anyway, like, as good as Gumi was. And when they're able to just do things like that, and you have two players that are that good at holding it down, it's just so, so annoying. And you just feel like, all right, maybe we just KO them. If we can just KO them, then they can't defend if they're dead. But Rune is actually like a very hard character to KO, especially when you have this bandage coming out over and over again. And Kainib's there to defend as well, even if you're able to get Gumi out of position. It's, it's just rough. It's really rough. And on the same end, like hook resets, is having to play defense the whole game. It's not really able to make any offensive plays. It's not really able to use, honestly, almost every ult that game I felt like was being used very defensively to keep the core out of the gold box. And Gumi was also playing Rune is able to make more offensive plays where Spencer is just kind of has to stand back and play this Atlas defensively and isn't really able to contribute to Lumos efforts on damage or um, any midfield efforts. So it just ends up being a Although that last set was pretty close and some of the sets felt pretty close, a bit of, feels a bit more like a stomp. Kumi saying he left his pauldrons at home because a <laughs> lot of, you usually see a lot of uh, pauldrons coming out versus these Oki style characters, such as Kazan, where you just want to sit on the enemy goalie. But Kumi uh, just doesn't need him. Just doesn't need him. Has the momentum. Just doesn't need him. He's like that. Uh, just able to kind of use those to run away for one, and then just this character is really good at dodging damage. It does take your cooldowns down, but you don't need these cooldowns if you don't have to defend, which honestly, Gumi didn't really feel like he had to defend all too much that game.
Yeah, he could he could just skate it up. And then anytime Lumos walked by, he says banish. And then that guy's gone for a few seconds. Let's him keep playing forward. Yeah, it's it seems like orbits you now once again their strategy of uh, just turtling and letting Lumos ball out in Gumi's net was working from the beginning. And I, I think that it was a, a pretty viable strategy and a great and once again a shift in the game plan to let them get that edge. But then with the with the counter adaptation coming out from Kai Noob just <laughs> also sitting on Lumos, it they weren't able to find a solution around that and weren't able to seal out the set because of it. I think that's uh, a very interesting little back and forth going on. Very, uh, very rough for orbits, who were were very close to bringing it back. But uh, yeah. nonetheless, great game. They both teams played well. Unfortunately, Demons Raw is just kind of an unstoppable force in an ASL. Yeah, they're quite a good team. It only gets easier for orbits from here. Um, so looking forward to seeing how they're able to play in the next few weeks. But that is going to be it from us. Coming up next, we'll see some good matches. We have Demon, uh, Demons Raw again, actually, versus Winterfall. Welcome and, back. And GOATS Esports. Let's go GOATS! Yo! Yeah. yeah, versus Sad yeah. Boys. But, uh, versus that'll be, Sad Boys. That, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Eh, whatever. Who? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who? Um, but, <laughs> but until then, that, that's going to be me and Yoshi signing off for now. Uh, until... it's, it's been real crew. It's been so real. But until next time.